I feel like I'm skipping a bunch of steps, but I don't know, because like I've never done this, and like I don't know what it is, but I just can't wrap my head around some things sometimes, and I don't know why. But today, we're gonna be trying to start it. Um, we're gonna throw the, the filter back on here. Don't worry. Um, there's no coolant in the car, so I'm just gonna start it for like a, like a second. Uh, there's also no oil, but I am going to put oil in. I'm, I'm at least that smart. So I have to take off the old filter, which is just right here. Drain the rest of that. There shouldn't be anything in there. Torque the actual drain plug down to spec with a copper crush washer on it, and then we should be good to go. Torque specs 25 foot pounds. This will take like five minutes, so I'm just gonna go ahead and throw it in there. I got my uh, oil filter here, and I got my oil. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this, throw that in, and then I'll be back. Also, a little update. I ended up getting the diff and the drive shaft in. Everything's good to go. That was horrible yesterday, doing that by myself with such a small jack. You can see how the diff just destroyed the <laughs> Uh, plastic on there or whatever that is it was horrible with that small of a jack terrible um, hopefully I have everything hooked up hopefully the car doesn't freak out if uh, if I try to start it I don't think it's gonna start I think it'll have like some block like uh, the parking safety switch or the uh, clutch like being pushed in some something I feel like is gonna stop it from cranking so I don't know we'll see I guess gonna go ahead and put oil in it now all right, I'm gonna hook up the negative terminal and see if the car starts. I'm really nervous. I, I don't I don't know what to expect. Oh, here we go. I don't know if it's gonna even even do anything. I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm gonna I'm just gonna run for a couple seconds. Well, it didn't start. No click. Anything. I think it could be the like uh, the parking position sensor. I think that's probably what it is. And I think that's what I'll try first. It's either that or it's the uh, not not having the clutch engaged. I uh, I actually don't know what it is. So I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to be even able to figure it out today. So uh, I guess I have some work to do. So I tried to start it yesterday and obviously that didn't work. And uh, that's because the ECU is not programmed to this car. And the reason I want to use the other ECU is because this is a completely different engine. It is a rev up engine, and the other one was the, just the regular DE, and uh, obviously I want to use that ECU. So just to try to start it, I do want to switch to the stock ECU and see if it will start. Uh, I have heard of people running the stock ECU on the rev up engines, just temporarily, and uh, they've said that, that it's worked, but maybe it's just a little bit, you know, tuned different. But I just want to see if it starts, that's pretty much it. And then I can move on and get that other ECU reprogrammed or do whatever I need to do. So we're going to switch the ECU back to the stock ECU and then we're going to try to start it again. Here we go. Going to try this again. Okay, didn't start again. Uh, now I think I have to wire up the ignition, uh, the parking safety switch. So I guess I have to do that now. All right, wiring's done. We're going to try to start it now for like the hundredth time. Oh my god! It's wow! What? Oh my god! Yeah, so I feel like it's something to do with the fuel. Um, and I guess I have to figure this out. Well, and obviously, because it's not going to start if I don't. So it's like a day later from the last clip, but I didn't record it because I didn't think it would work because it was so simple. So I posted on Reddit and thank you to this guy right here because what a simple issue. What a simple issue. And I went in there and I was like, sure enough, yep. I didn't flip the lever back over, which I thought I did. I guess I just didn't remember how I pulled it out. And then I go to start the car, it starts cranking, cranking, and I'm like, oh, same thing. So I hold it on for like a second longer, and it starts, and I'm like, what? And I freak out, and I turn it off, because there's no coolant in the radiator, which actually we have just our transmission fluid came in today, and our coolant and power steering fluid is in here, our liquid gold, $80 for all that stuff shipped from Z1. I can't believe it just started. My mind is just blown. I mean, it runs. I'm so excited and happy. I want to get a clip of it starting, but I, don't know, I probably shouldn't run it like this. But I don't know. It's on. It's on the old 
ECU and I probably need to get some fluids in here and everything like that. I don't know, it's probably not a huge deal. I'll go ahead and start it. Oh my God. See, now I don't actually know the reason it's not starting. I'm gonna say it's because I don't think there's enough uh, juice left in the battery because I've had it so many times cranking over on this battery. And uh, yeah, okay, well, I'll, I'll eventually get a clip of it starting. Um, I think that's all I'm gonna do for today. I'm actually super shocked it started. Um, but yeah, I'm going to now go inside because it's really rainy and I just got off of work, so. I think next step then is to put all this fluid in and actually have the car run for a little bit. See how that goes. Make sure everything is good. I actually have it running. I don't know if I want to flush out the fluids completely um, just because I don't know if I need to do that, but I guess I'll do my research. Here we are, another new day out here. Today, hopefully, hopefully everything goes good and we get it to run. I hope. What I'm gonna start with is getting the BCM out of this car and the key ignition out of this car, also the IPDM, uh, because I learned that if you switch all those, apparently you don't need to get the ECU reprogrammed because it, everything should be good and it should be from the old car. So hopefully we're gonna do that today. Hopefully everything works. I did see a video where a guy took his key ignition out of another car and tried to put it in his, but they were different. So praying that that can be the same on this car and uh, we can be good. But if not, I think there's a way to get that reprogrammed and then you don't have to get the other stuff, but I don't know. A little confusing, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then, and then we can get it hopefully working. Um, just cause uh, I can probably start it again on this ECU and actually do everything I need to, but uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and try to get the BCM and stuff like that swapped over. All right, so we got the BCM out from over here, just under that fuse box. So I switched over the BCM and I already had the ECU in here. And what I did instead of switching the uh, key ignition was I took the uh, RFID tag out of the one key that was for the black car and I put it into the uh, silver car key uh, just to save a little bit of time of switching that whole key ignition. And like I said, I, that one guy uh, said that his didn't swap, which I'm pretty sure this one probably would have swapped over. Uh, I'm sure he had like a different car year or something like that. But hopefully this works just as well. Thank you to this guy on g35driver.com uh, for suggesting that and uh, providing pictures. And if this does successfully work, I will show you guys how I did mine. It was really easy and way faster, I'm sure, than doing the whole key ignition part. So I think we're ready to go ahead and try to start it. I, uh, I don't know if I need to switch to IPDM. Um, I went ahead and replied back to that guy asking if I did. If this doesn't work, then I guess we'll go ahead and try that as well. So we're gonna see if the gnats are completely solid red, which they're flashing right now, which is a good sign. I heard the fuel bomb, I think. They're not solid red. I think it'd start. I'm so excited. I'm so happy that worked. I can't believe that worked. That was super simple. And now I have the actual black car ECU. So I have the actual ECU without needing to get it reprogrammed. I didn't have to get the key reprogrammed. Huge thanks to this guy because I would have no idea. And this guy's on like every forum post that I've seen. Huge help. That was, I can't believe that worked. That was so easy. And I thought I was gonna have to take it and get it reprogrammed and everything like that. I'm so happy. And I have all the fluids today too, so. Today is gonna be a good day, I feel like. Today's gonna be a great day, I feel like. What I'm gonna do now is go ahead and put coolant in the radiator so that I can actually keep the car running for more than five seconds at one time. So uh, I'm gonna watch some videos on that and I'm gonna put some coolant in there. Also, like I said, the way that I switched this uh, key tag over was I went and I'll uh, put a link to my form post on G35 driver so you guys can see that too. He had some pictures on there 
So this right here is the little piece that you need to get out of the key to put it in the other key for it to detect your key. As you guys can see, I really didn't even mess mine up that bad. It looks pretty good still. There's a little chip in it, which I'll never notice. What I did was I took a screwdriver and I pried up on this little piece. I'll put it in right here. I pried on the top of that. You guys can probably see where I pried on it. And I just kind of dug in and pushed it out. I also used a heat gun to heat it up a little bit just to make this plastic a little less uh, tough so that it wouldn't like you know crack it and then I heated it up afterwards and it kind of fell back down and it looks really good actually I'm surprised with how easily it came out um, this one kind of came out a little harder heated it up a little bit stuck it in there pushed it out and then I popped it back in here and I mean it started so super happy with that if you guys have any questions on any of this stuff I'll be more than happy to help because this has been a very uh, interesting process of doing this there's not a whole lot of stuff but I mean there's a ton of stuff so I don't know um, yeah, like I said, any questions, let me know. I'll try to help you guys to the best of the abilities if you guys are uh, doing this too. Gonna go ahead and put some coolant in here now. Now while we're working on bleeding the radiator and uh, the coolant system, I'm gonna go ahead and put this power steering fluid in here. I was already buying the coolant off there and this was only $5, the OEM Nissan fluid. So I decided I'll just go ahead and buy that and throw it in. And uh, gonna do that. Then I have the transmission fluid and uh, I have to bleed the clutch. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to do anything with the brakes. I doubt it right now. Um, but I don't want to keep these red calipers. And whoever painted them, painted them while they were on the car. And they're super dirty and disgusting. I also need to check the brake pads. They look okay, I think. Uh, I don't know. And then, just going to work on getting the car completely back together. Probably throw the hood on sometime soon. But just finishing up stuff, really, I guess. Which is crazy to say, because... I didn't even think the car was gonna run today. I'm just really excited. So I'm having a lot of trouble bleeding the clutch right now. I can't get it to actually bleed. Um, and it's apparently I'm supposed to gravity bleed it for a little bit. See, there's no resistance at all and the clutch doesn't come back. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and try to bleed this now. Hopefully this works. Bring this works. Cause if I can get this, then I can move on to actual move on to actual stuff so i mean this is an actual thing this is a pretty important thing you kind of need your clutch but i guess after this we can actually see if the wheels spin so that'd be cool